I grew up in a family of artists, scientists, and ministers. And if you put those three occupations together, it's sort of the job description of what I do here. I'm Nell Saldi, and I'm an evolutionary geneticist. I grew up scientifically as a cell biologist, and we were studying this pond critter, single cell organism. Our last common ancestor diverged something like a billion years ago. And yet, we share all of this common cell biology, even over the course of hundreds of millions of years. And so it's really fascinating to think about what is it that has stayed the same over millions of years, and what are the things that are changing? And in fact, what are the things that are changing the most rapidly? It turns out that a major category of rapid evolution involves the genes of our immune system. It ends up locking the host and the pathogen into what can look like an evolutionary battle of counter-adaptations. The host becomes better because of a mutation that becomes selected on. This gives a temporary advantage. Then the pathogen, as a massive population, sampling thousands of mutations, in some cases by the minute, by the hour, pretty soon selection will happen so that the microbe will defeat some of our immune defenses. And this is the essence of an evolutionary battle, of an ongoing genetic conflict. Evolutionary conflicts with hosts and pathogens can really unfold in real time. Our own evolution is much slower. In order to study evolution in action, we can go right to the microbes and in fact set up experiments to see evolution happening even in the course of weeks or months. To study our own evolution, we actually take a different view. We sample the diversity around us and we try to look backwards to try to understand what changes happened over the course of a million years or so. And then can we use that information to understand the evolution that's happening in real time today with the pathogens that we face today, with the viruses that we face today, with the bacteria that we face today. A really useful concept that's emerged in our field is called the Red Queen Hypothesis. This borrows from Lewis Carroll, the author in his book, Through the Looking Glass, where the Red Queen said, it takes all the running you can do to stay in the same place. It's been developed to think about how predator and prey competitors interact with each other. In the last few decades, it's now moved to a different biological scale, to the microscopic level. And in particular, thinking about hosts and pathogens and how this idea of molecular arms races has also emerged. So one interesting question is the current pandemic, SARS-2, one of these molecular arms races. And the answer is probably yes. Here we have an example of a zoonosis event. The virus moved from animals to humans. That's an adaptive leap for a virus to take. One thing that we're really interested in the future is can we change our own cell biology just a little bit so that we can broadly defeat many viruses or many pathogens just with one treatment? So how are we doing this? We're taking advantage of the genomes of diverse species all over the world. And we're asking, are there specific fragments of genes that might have this property of being able to alter our cell biology in a very minor way, but having a big impact on the ability of a microbe to replicate. This is one way that you could use evolution to defeat microbes, is if instead of targeting them directly in a genetic conflict, to step around so that we become invisible to the viruses, change a little bit of our biology so that the viruses don't recognize us anymore, and it will be much harder for them to gain or regain a foothold in that arms race. When we think about the vaccines that are being developed today, they depend on some of the discoveries like this decades ago where scientists didn't even know that the things that they were studying, the things they were discovering, would be used or repurposed to deploy a new vaccine or a new antiviral strategy. And yet, this happens again and again with fundamental science. The curiosity that we have will lead to discoveries, maybe in ways we don't understand today, but will be really crucial for the cures of tomorrow, cures for pandemics ahead.